Welcome to MH2801 video segment on an example of contour integration. Okay, in this in this example, we will consider the the contour integration of f of z equals to z over z to the n power n integrated around the circular contour defined by x square plus y square equals to r square where x is the real part of z and y is the imaginary part of z. Now before we can perform this integration, we note that the absolute value of the complex number z is always equals to r along this contour. Okay? And in fact, if we write if we write if we write the complex number z in polar form we see that z equals to r e i theta and in this exp and, and in along this contour we note that r is constant okay but theta changes okay now what that means is of course that dz is equals to r differentiate this e i theta you bring down an i, e i theta, and then d theta. So this is equals to i, r, e i theta, d theta. Okay. Now let's substitute this into the uh, expression for the contour integral, which is okay, which is this contour along the contour c of f of z dz. And this is equals to because I when I change when I change the polar the complex number z along this contour, I'm only changing theta but not r. So this is uh, this is an integral uh, with respect to theta, and it goes from theta equals to zero to theta equals to two pi. And the f of z itself, of course, is z to the n. Okay. And then dz is i r e i theta d theta, which of course uh, can be written as the integral from theta equals to zero to theta equals to two pi of r to the n e to the i n theta i r e i theta d theta. So let's simplify this a little bit further before we uh, go to the next page and actually evaluate the integral. Now i is a constant. i is a constant, so we can bring it out of the integral. r to the n plus 1 is also a constant, so we can also bring it out. Uh, but theta, of course, is a variable along the contour c, so we don't bring it out. We keep it as uh, it is inside the integral, and this will be e i n plus 1 theta d theta. Now how do we integrate something like this? That's actually quite easy. Uh, this is equals to i r n plus 1. Okay, uh, and then what do we have? We have, okay, let's write down the integra integral that, we'll, that we will get by integrating e i n plus 1 theta. We will get back e i n plus 1 theta again, but we have to divide by i n plus 1. Okay, and this uh, inti this will have to be evaluated at 2 pi and 0. Now, because, because e i theta is periodic, okay, what this means is that uh, e i 0, oops, this is not 0, so let me get rid of it. Okay, get back the, whoops, okay, I don't want to change the brush properties, and I don't want this, okay, so EI0, okay, is equals to EI 2 pi, okay, and certainly, certainly, if EI theta is periodic, then EIN plus 1, theta is 
also periodic. Okay, now that, this means is that EI n plus 1 times 0 is equal to EI n plus 1 times 2 pi. So what this means is that if we evaluate EI n plus 1 theta at 2 pi and at 0, the two terms will cancel each other and we will get 0. Now there's an exception to this particular result and that is when n is equal to minus 1. So let's see what happens when n is equals to minus 1. So when n is equals to minus 1, so in the earlier case n is anything but any integer except minus 1. But when n is equals to minus 1, then what happens is that the integral from 0 to 2 pi of uh, z to the minus 1 times i r e i theta d theta can be written as integral from 0 to 2 pi okay 1 uh, 1 over z is the same as 1 over r e minus i theta okay times i r e i theta d theta and therefore what we get is that the r's will cancel okay the r will cancel but not just that, the e i theta will also cancel with the e minus i theta. So this is actually very simple. This is just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of i d theta, which of course, because i is a constant, let's bring it out of the integral. Then we just get integral d theta from 0 to 2 pi, which is 2 pi, and therefore the answer is 2 pi i. So both results are interesting, okay? So let's write down interesting here. Okay, so the first thing is when n is not equals to minus 1, okay, this integral along the close, close contour C of z to the n dz is equals to 0, okay? It does not depend does not depend on the size of the contour. That means we can choose r equals to 1, or we can choose r equals to 2, uh, or r equals to infinity, uh, r equals to 100. It doesn't seem to depend on the size of the circular contour. Okay, now more importantly, when n is equals to minus 1, this co contour integral dz, it will be equals to 2 pi i. So this is non-zero, okay, but also contour independent. And that makes it very convenient for us. So why is it that uh, when z is equals to minus 1, this is 2 pi i, so the way to understand this is to think of integral 1 over z dz, which should be equal to ln z uh, plus a constant c. Now, ln z is multi-value. Ln z is multi-value, which means that if we start, if we start here, we go one round, so let me change color to indicate the contour. If we go start here, then we go one round, then we come back, and we are now on a different branch. On the Riemann surface, and this means that f of z is discontinuous. Okay? So that's why uh, 1 over z, the, 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 circ the integral of 1 over z over the circular contour is non-zero. And actually, 2 pi i is the uh, discontinuity between different branches of ln z.